So Polygon has been the epitome of building throughout the bear market here, and they've just released their Q3 report, going through some of the most exciting stats and highlights from this last quarter. So we're gonna share these today and go exactly through why this one has been doing so well in the adversity of this bear market. If you enjoy the content and you're a Polygon fan, make sure you subscribe to the channel. So here we have the document Polygon Insights for Q3 of 2022, where they share some of the real standout facts and figures that have been happening and driving network adoption for Polygon and of course their token Matic. So as we can see, in comparison to the previous quarter, they have a load of user stats here, unique active addresses, now up to 5.82 million unique users. That is a pretty outstanding statistic in itself. Whilst total transactions are down slightly around 10% to 256 million, they've still managed to have an average transaction cost of a lowly one and a half cent there. Big quarter for NFT sales with volume eclipsing $4.7 billion, up 234%. And the network revenue is down roughly 26% to $4.2 million. Of course, during a bear market, there is typically less demand for block space, uh, but they have been fighting that on all fronts with some rather enticing dApps and big announcements that have just come out. So a big announcement was the addition of Polygon in the Disney Accelerator program. So the only blockchain to be chosen by Disney, and this seems to be down the lines of NFTs and enhancing the digital strategy for Disney. So, you know, with the previous partnerships that Polygon have had with Facebook via Instagram and the Facebook platform itself, with their NFTs being visible on there, you can see Disney are also hot on the heels of this kind of move, but they are not the only Web2 company coming to Polygon for their Web3 strategy, also Starbucks and Robinhood. More on those items in just a moment. But network analysis wise, looking at the quarterly user growth, we can see from Q4 2021 when the market topped here, we put in a higher low. So 5.2 million users down to 4.8 million users, but a good response in Q2 up to 5.3 million, eclipsing the previous all-time high here, and then again pushing on up another 10% to 5.8 million users. Uh, so showing some real network effect there, and a lot of new investors are making their way over to the Polygon network for a variety of things. Think gaming, think DeFi, and their burgeoning NFT economy. So whilst other blockchains may be losing some traffic at this moment in time, Polygon is definitely gaining. What dApps are actually leading the race here? Well, in first place, with the most unique addresses so far is Benji Bananas. This is a game. It's also had almost 1 million transactions, as you can see there. And littering this top ecosystem dApps, we have a load of both games and DeFi. So these two product categories clearly have product market fit on Polygon. I think this has a lot to do with some of the C-level hires they have. Ryan Wyatt over at Polygon Studios, who is the former YouTube gaming chief. So no surprise to see a load of games being onboarded into Polygon and having some real great success here. But within the mix here, we also have you know big winners, but also some big losers, mainly in the games category, which is quite up and down. And I think this has to touch on the fact that a lot of games, when they're newly released, people firm away and start playing them. You know, they're a nice, shiny new thing. And then maybe as hype dies down, you obviously get a lot of players moving on to the newest and latest best thing. So moving potentially from one game onto the other on Polygon. So a tale of ups and downs there. But overall, good user growth. Lots of wallets actively using the blockchain and playing these various dApps, whether they are games themselves or the likes of DeFi protocols. NFT volumes have been surging as well, up from 1.4 billion in Q2, up to $4.7 billion in Q3. And this actually highlights that the top five contributors are all financial NFTs. So for example, Uniswap V3 liquidity providers utilize NFTs to position the liquidity where most trades occur. Then on the right hand side, we have the number of NFT mints that has also gone up as well. In terms of the active NFT wallets, they had a big spike in the second week of August here. This did fall off slightly, but has since recovered. So although we have some initial hype around new mints, for example, there does seem to be a trend of stickiness in the NFT market category for Polygon. And then developers, the life and soul 
of a bear market. Bear markets are for building, remember. Well, in these year over year figures, as you can see compared to Q3 of 2021, there are more than double the amount of smart contracts being created now than the previous year. So up to 202,000 new smart contracts and a lot of new developers. So a lot of new lifeblood as well. New creators up 7X on the previous year, which is a very interesting stat. There's been a load of recent conferences and meetups where Polygon has done tremendously well. I've seen it over social media and this seems to be one of the most vibrant hubs for new developers coming to build. Now a huge coup here for Polygon, the Starbucks partnership. This is where Starbucks loyalty program is now enabled via Polygon to give out NFTs. So Starbucks rewards program members in the United States plus employees in the United States are now eligible to take part with these collectible stamps in the form of NFTs. So this loyalty program that is a new one for Starbucks, you know, really trying to embrace Web3 here, is in direct partnership with Polygon and taking advantage of Polygon's NFT infrastructure. Now a stat that might amaze you is the fact that there are 25 million Starbucks reward members in the US alone, where this is initially targeted, and I think this will go worldwide, if it all goes down successfully, well, this is a whole load of touch points where the Polygon network is having with normal users. Just people going and having their coffees are gonna have some form of contact with the Polygon ecosystem. Now, what are some of the key drivers behind this? Well, as the VP of loyalty and strategy for Starbucks says, building Starbucks Odyssey using tech that aligns with our sustainability aspirations and commitments is a top priority. So within this, they're mentioning the fact Polygon is carbon neutral as it offset all of the blockchain's carbon debt previously with the partnership via ClimateDAO. So ESG, sustainability, all those things play into big Web2 companies thinking when they're looking to partner with new ventures. And of course, the Web3 blockchain of choice here was Polygon. So this is a very, very notable partnership. And this is neither the first nor the last Web2 company looking to partner with Polygon here. Another recent one was Robinhood as well. So on the one hand, we had Starbucks, 25 million customers on the loyalty scheme. Robinhood has 15 million registered users on their platform. So Polygon is the partnered wallet provider here for Robinhood. So Robinhood is bringing out its own non-custodial wallet to rival the likes of Metamask or maybe the Coinbase wallet. And this venture is in association with Polygon to bring, as they say, gas-free DeFi to millions of users. Now this can have some profound effects here. Clearly they've partnered with Polygon due to the low cost environment. So with such low cost, they can easily offset that and give this, you know, a gas-free to their end consumers. So that is exactly what they've decided to do. So users of the Robinhood wallet will not be paying any gas fees for doing things like token swaps or using the latest DeFi innovation from the Polygon network. And I think this has profound effects as well for the ecosystem on Polygon. Some of those dApps could have huge numbers of users and do huge, you know, TVL or transactions by having one of these easy connections to a big Web2 player that's going to onboard a whole mass of new investors into the crypto space. Now, in the month previous, Robinhood partnered with Polygon to allow customers to deposit and withdraw Matic and USDC on the Polygon network to and from the Robinhood app. Now, this was a cookie crumb for what was to come here with the wallet integration. Clearly, they were just testing things out. And now with Robinhood releasing their own non-custodial wallet, we can piece this all together and see exactly how this partnership is going to work. This is definitely super bullish for the ecosystem of Polygon. Now, the most recent announcement that is going to be doing the rounds in a big way here is ZK EVM. So essentially, over the last year, Polygon has been buying up a lot of the mindshare in the ZK space. It acquired both MIR, M-I-R, and Hermes Network and brought them into the Polygon umbrella. So they obviously onboard a load of those developers. They buy up that tech, and this has really pushed things forward for ZK EVM. So this is going to be the first ZK, which is zero knowledge proofs, EVM compatible chain to be launched here. So this is kind of the end state of Ethereum and what people are seeing the future of Ethereum as and Polygon have gone and launched this very damn quickly. So this launched in testnet, I believe it was, within the last 24 hours. And what they say here is that the general approach to using ZK proofs to scale Ethereum is to build what's known as a ZK rollup. This is a layer two protocol that rolls up a large batch of transactions and then uses a ZK proof to verify them on Ethereum. Now there's many different iterations of this. You've got the likes of Loopring, ZK Sync, and other teams 
badgering away to get their version of a ZK Layer 2 environment out there, but Polygon has gone ahead and launched ZK EVM in testnet right about now. So this is a real push for market share in my eyes and something that really shouldn't be overlooked. They're pushing the technical capabilities of blockchains forward very quickly here and the future of Ethereum is gonna be on the L2 environment. So a lot to take note of with this and I'm sure we'll hear a lot more of this as it really is about to be ZK season with ZK Sync and Starknet launching within this month. So here are some of those highlights of recent partnerships, Disney, Meta, Reddit, HTC, Mercedes-Benz, and of course, Starbucks. And I mentioned this guy earlier, this is Ryan Wyatt, previously the head of gaming, I believe at Google, and then of YouTube most recently. And now he runs the Polygon Studios, i.e. the gaming arm for Polygon. So Ryan's experience here, clearly pulling some strings in the background, getting things off the ground in terms of NFTs, some of these key partnerships with big Web2 companies, and onboarding some of the best new games into the blockchain space. He tweeted this just earlier, now up to 53,000 dApps on Polygon, up 60% since the start of Q3, and a brand new all-time high here for the number of unique active users on the Polygon network. So key metrics being hit, even during a bear market, this is really impressive stuff here to see the network adoption that is currently ongoing over at Polygon. So hats off to all involved. And this, another chart that is really worth taking note of, here, the unique active users on both Ethereum, the top line, and Polygon here, the bottom. And so as I said earlier, the future of Ethereum lies on the Layer 2 environment. And as you can see, eventually what should happen is that the Layer 2 environment has the majority of users, and then the transactions just settle back to the main chain ETH in roll-up format. So we're seeing this in real time right now. Polygonmatic really bringing up the numbers here for the active users, both daily, weekly, and monthly. And those weekly active addresses is now 74% of that of the sum over on ETH. So the previous metric we measured almost everything by was TVL of a chain, but now you can see there's a lot more going on and things we need to dig into, how many users of these various dApps, even the likes of games that may not actually have a TVL behind them. All of these things need to be taken into consideration because the number of users and adoption of a network goes far beyond how much money is actually sat on there. Uh, we can see from the TVL of Polygon 1.3 billion currently. All the big DeFi names have deployed onto Polygon and we're starting to see a movement as well from new teams setting up and just directly getting onto the Polygon network and sidestepping other networks. And that's a key indicator that this L2 environment is one to really take note of here for the future. And all of this info is being taken notice of by the big players in the market. Grayscale here have just added during their quarterly rebalance, the MATIC token to their GDLC, which is the Grayscale Digital Large Cap Funds. And from this, we can now see MATIC, the Polygon Eco, is now taking up over 1% of the composition of this ETF. So looking at the price chart here for the MATIC token, we have the previous bottom here in June, which is a tap of support back in April of 2021 at around 30 cents. We obviously hit this during the market nuke, but we've since not really looked back here, had a bit of a battle around the 60 cent region. But since mid July with metrics taking off, the price of the Matic token has been well above 70 cents and hasn't even tested 60 as a support yet. Now I say yet because I do expect we will come and test this area as the bear market continues, but this is very interesting to see how this token is performing and the relative strength it's showing versus others in the market right now. We can see that it is putting in a string of lower highs here. So potentially we'll get a nice little dump down, but some key areas to consider here around 60 cents. And if you're a real doomsdayer, 30 cents down there. But with the fundamentals of this network showing key signs of growth, this is one I've definitely got on my DCA list. And if we do get a nice puke in the market and some form of capitulation that many are expecting, uh, somewhere around this 30 cents region would be time to maybe load up the truck. So what did you make of this Polygon Insights for Q3 of 2022? Is it as bullish as it seems? Or do you expect all these metrics to drop off the cliff as we enter into 2023? Let me know down below, but I do think network effects are well and alive here on the Polygon Network. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.